Today is Friday, October 8th. What to know about the next step in allowing younger children ages 5 to 11 to get a COVID-19 vaccine. The latest action to avoid a debt disaster in the U.S. and deadly flooding in Alabama. Plus, why more than a dozen former NBA players are now facing federal charges. Why Tesla is moving its headquarters. And what you may get to see if you look up at the sky tonight. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. The U.S. is another step closer to having COVID-19 vaccines ready for younger children. Pfizer has now formally asked the FDA to give the okay for kids 5 to 11 years old. Though the younger kids would get a smaller dose, about a third of the vaccine given to people 12 and older. An estimated 28 million children in the U.S. would become eligible for the shots if regulators give the green light. Remember, Pfizer already said last month that the lower dose for ages 5 to 11 is both safe and effective. At this point, there's no timetable for how long it might take for federal health officials to give it emergency use authorization, but they are set to publicly discuss the evidence on October 26th. The FDA vaccine chief has said he hopes approval will happen within a matter of weeks. Moderna is also studying its COVID-19 shots in elementary school-aged children, so we can expect data from them soon as well. And both Pfizer and Moderna are testing vaccines on even younger kids down to six months old. Well, we have an update from Capitol Hill. The first crucial vote to avoid an economic crisis has now happened. After Senate leaders made a deal earlier this week, the Senate approved a bill last night to extend the government's borrowing ability. The bill increases the debt limit by nearly half a trillion dollars, which will allow the U.S. to pay off its bills through at least December 3rd. It still needs to pass the House and get the president's signature, but that is all expected to happen before the deadline. Because if that deadline of October 18th were to come and go without this short-term extension, it would be the first time the U.S. would default on its debt, and economists say it could trigger a recession. It seems that will not be happening for now. But expect another showdown over the same issue soon as the new deadline in December nears. President Biden is expected to restore environmental protections for three national monuments. They include Bears Ears and Grand Staircase Escalani in Utah, as well as an area of sea canyons and underwater mountains off the New England coast. Former President Trump had scaled back protections for those areas, opening them up to mining or development. Now, the New York Times reports, President Biden's plans are part of a series of steps to protect lands and waters, some of which are sacred to tribal nations. Already, conservation groups are welcoming the news, saying the president has listened to indigenous tribes and others about protecting these landscapes. But the Utah governor and some lawmakers in the state are not happy with the change. They think there needs to be a more permanent solution through legislation, not executive order, since it's hard to manage the land when the protections are constantly changing. Some also accuse Biden of ignoring input from the communities closest to these monuments. More information will likely come out with the president's official announcement about this today. Days of pouring rain triggered widespread flooding across the southeast, and it turned deadly in Alabama. Officials say at least four people were killed, including a young child, and many others had to be rescued from the floodwaters. In some areas, about 10 inches of rain fell in just 24 hours. Like in Pelham, about 20 miles south of Birmingham, Nearly 100 people had to be rescued from homes or pulled from cars. 18 former NBA players are facing federal charges. Investigators say they scammed the league's health care fund out of millions of dollars between 2017 and 2020. Prosecutors say the players submitted fake invoices for medical and dental procedures that never actually happened. For example, one player allegedly claimed he spent $48,000 on root canals at a dental office in Beverly Hills, but travel records apparently show he was not even in the country at the time of the fake appointment. Investigators say the ex-players submitted claims worth nearly $4 million and successfully pocketed about $2.5 million. Former players charged in the scheme include Glenn Davis and Tony Allen. Shooting guard Terrence Williams was named as the alleged ringleader. Prosecutors say each player has been charged with conspiracy to commit health care fraud, which carries a possible sentence of up to 20 years in prison if convicted. The league called the charges disheartening and has promised to cooperate with investigators. The Nobel Prize in Literature has been announced. It went to Tanzanian-born novelist Abdul Razak Gurna. The New York Times notes he's the first black writer in nearly three decades to win this award. And with it, he'll get the equivalent of more than a million U.S. dollars. He's the author of 10 novels. His work focuses on colonialism and the trauma of the refugee experience. 
Up next, the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, which has been described as one of the greatest honors anyone can receive, will be announced early this morning. So stay tuned. More news coming up, but first, thanks to our sponsor, Ritual. You all know I love to cite research, and Ritual offers plenty of it. The company says more than 97% of women 19 to 50 years old are not getting enough vitamin D in their diet, and 95% are not getting their recommended daily intake of key omega-3s. So Ritual invested in research for their Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin, specifically designed to help fill nutrient gaps in the diets of women ages 18 and up. The results? In a study published in the scientific journal Frontiers in Nutrition, Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin was shown to increase vitamin D levels by 43% and omega-3 DHA levels by 41% in 12 weeks. It's part of the reason I feel so great about taking my Ritual vitamins as part of my everyday. I'm currently taking the postnatal vitamin, and I love knowing I'm not only getting those extra nutrients, but also the ingredients are non-GMO, traceable, and vegan-friendly, so there's no shady stuff in there. And right now, Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off your first three months. Just visit ritual.com slash newsworthy and turn healthy habits into a ritual. That's 10% off at ritual.com slash newsworthy. The CDC is encouraging more Americans to get the annual flu vaccine right now. Flu season typically lasts from October to May, so health experts say the best time to roll up your sleeve is by the end of this month. Of course, last year, the flu was practically non-existent because of COVID-19 precautions. But health officials say they're expecting a more serious flu season this year, especially since schools and businesses are open and people are out and about more often without masks. And a recent survey found about 4 in 10 Americans aren't sure or are not planning to get the flu shot themselves this year. Experts are concerned that an uptick in flu cases combined with COVID-19 could overwhelm hospitals this winter. They say getting the flu shot is the best way to avoid a serious case of the flu. And by the way, the CDC's updated guidelines do say you can get the flu and COVID-19 vaccines at the same time. (music) Airlines are trying to get ready for a surge in holiday travel. United Airlines, for example, is now offering more flights this holiday season than at any other time since the pandemic started. The company also says the number of searches on the company's website and app for December flights is 16% higher compared to the same time in 2019, even before the pandemic. More flight options are expected for ski and beach destinations in the U.S., though international travel is still down due to ongoing restrictions. Tesla is moving its headquarters from Silicon Valley in California to Austin, Texas. Despite the move, Tesla CEO Elon Musk says he does plan to continue expanding activities in California as well. But Musk publicly lashed out at some California government officials last year and threatened a move back then. He disagreed with some of the COVID-related health orders at the time. But he did not mention any of that during his announcement about the headquarters moving yesterday. Instead, Musk says moving to Texas is about making the location more accessible for workers with things like more affordable housing. It is worth noting Musk personally relocated to Austin from Los Angeles last year. It's not clear why, but California does have some of the highest personal income taxes in the country for wealthy residents, while Texas has no personal income tax. TechCrunch reports Austin has recently seen a flood of tech companies and remote workers moving there. Starting next month, people who post videos on YouTube denying that climate change is real will not be able to make money from those videos. Google-owned YouTube announced the change this week. Those videos can still be posted, but they will not include ads. Google says they're making the change in part because of pushback from advertisers, who say they don't want their ads associated with outright climate change denial. The tech giant plans to use automation and human reviewers to enforce this new rule. But Google says the change will not extend to videos that include debates about climate policy or discussions about the effects of climate change. This is part of Google's larger effort to deal with misinformation. Well, be sure to check out the night sky this evening as soon as it becomes dark. The Draconid meteor shower is peaking tonight with an expected 10 meteors or so-called shooting stars per hour. This meteor shower is unique because it's best viewed right around nightfall, so you don't actually have to get up in the middle of the night to enjoy it like many of the others. The crescent moon is expected to set before nightfall, so as long as the weather cooperates, those of us in the northern hemisphere should have an excellent view. A quick reminder, as we mentioned and discussed more yesterday, it is either Columbus Day and or Indigenous Peoples Day this Monday, October 11th. So expect government offices, banks, the U.S. Postal Service, and some schools to be closed. The Newsworthy will also be off on Monday, but we'll be back tomorrow with your special edition Saturday episode. And then your next news roundup will be here on Tuesday. 
that's it for the main news today, but now it's time for Feel Good Friday, when we bring you one extra feel good or positive news story before the weekend. But first, this episode is brought to you by Crowd Health. For some people in the United States, their choices are either going without health insurance at all or paying sky-high deductibles while still wondering whether their medical appointments and procedures will actually be covered. Well, now there's a new option that's really made for people who are healthy and not already getting health insurance through an employer. So think freelancers, those in the gig economy, entrepreneurs, and more. It's called Crowd Health. It's not health insurance. It's a community-powered alternative. Crowd Health gets rid of the insurance middleman and passes those savings to its members. And for some, it can save hundreds of dollars every month. Crowd Health helps people who want to get and stay healthy in return for lower prices. And right now, just for the newsworthy listeners, you can get your first six months for just $99 per month. That's a savings of almost 50% versus their standard pricing and a lot less than some high deductible plans. Just go to joincrowdhealth.com slash 99 to learn more and then enter the code newsworthy at sign up. That's joincrowdhealth.com slash 99 and then use the promo code newsworthy. Crowd Health is not health insurance. It's a community powered alternative. Term and conditions may apply. Okay, now back to Feel Good Friday. Scientists now know that giant penguins were walking and swimming around New Zealand about 30 million years ago, and it's all thanks to a children's field trip. Back in 2006, a naturalist club went on a fossil hunting trip with an archaeologist. They thought they'd find fossils from shellfish and other creatures. But to their amazement, the kids noticed a block of sandstone that was only visible because the tide was low at the time. A bone was sticking out of the rock. A few weeks later, the team cut the fossil out of the rock and donated it to a museum. Now, thanks to 15 years of research, scientists have concluded the fossil belonged to an ancient species of penguin. It looked a lot different than the birds we see at the zoo. The penguin stood four and a half feet tall, or about the size of a 10-year-old child. Scientists say it had tall legs, a longer beak, and was thinner than modern penguins. Some of the kids involved in the original trip, who are all adults now, say it's surreal to think that a childhood field trip helped lead to such a great discovery. All right, we'll be back tomorrow with our special edition Saturday episode. You'll be hearing from the gymnasts who stepped in for Simone Biles at the Summer Olympics. Then we'll be back on Tuesday with your next news roundup. For now, thanks for listening and have a great day. 